Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We are getting ready for game two between Immortals Academy and Evil Geniuses Prodigies. And uh, if you missed it, well, <laughs> well, Smacks, I, I, I'm pretty sure someone must have screenshotted or gotten that emote of you of just doing this, right? <laughs> just, oh, no. So uh, back door through the front door, as Pocket Rhino put it out on Twitter. Uh, <laughs> but... Before we get further into this series, we have a quick Samsung Fast Five for you, uh, ladies and gentlemen, all at home. Hey. And we're just going to show the stats that we got so far on the board going through. Top fastest 100 CS, Tenacity, Lorlo, and Viper for the following times. Bot fastest 10k gold, Cody Sun, Spawn Team Luke, Jungle fastest level 6, Panda Shurn, Fire Kenvy, Support fastest item transform, Poom, Isles, and Hooks. And then for mid lane, fastest mythic item completion, and Jojo Pyun. Sword and Fire Fire. Yeah, we got some, we got some cool stuff to look over here. Uh, I'm seeing a lot of red circles, most notably the Hundred Thieves, as uh, top jungle and support are all featured in this one. Uh, also, the the jungle fastest level six in Panda. I remember that game from yesterday. That was a very chaotic one uh, for Panda. Five minutes, 22 seconds. That's some that's some gigabyte Marines level speed to level six, if I if I do say so myself, Rob. Hmm. Shout out to Levi. Hey. Uh, but but that was a uh, that was a special strategy. This is all natural being able to hit level six, you know, if you're Panda here. So uh, for me, I think the other uh, notable one is for fastest uh, mythic item completion for Jujo Pyun for Evil Geniuses Academy. He has been someone that we got a chance to see at Arena of Legends last week. Mm -hmm. And he has been, and also at uh, Giant Slayer, actually. He has been someone that has been under the radar. And even though Evil Geniuses came in 10th during their Academy split, they as a squad, along with this incredible mid laner have just been popping up and ramping up in strength and I, honestly I, i'm looking at them to be one of the the underdogs uh, going into this proven grounds tournament yeah not just underdog but i think dark horse is a pretty fair uh, dark horse fair yes title to give to them for maybe someone who can go out and win the entire thing they already got their series win against FlyQuest academy who were the finalists in the arena of legends uh, up against team liquid so very very notable series win for them and for jojo Pune as well even topping the charts as far as fastest mythic item uh, right here so uh, thank you to samsung ssd for for giving us these cool stats i actually have one installed on my computer and nice. it's not even you know part of the the sponsor so i we, we can definitely say that we, we love the product but going into game two between this series of immortals academy and evil geniuses prodigies i know smacks you were very you're very uh, aghast about the way that game one ended, and uh, and not that that has anything to do with the draft, but you did also mention that you had some thoughts that you wanted to get out before we started the draft of game two. You know, by the end of that game, I I certainly was feeling a number of emotions. Uh, oh, we're going to get to relive a lot of those plays. That's going to be amazing. I get to see that again. But <laughs> yeah, I... I certainly felt a lot of things here uh, for the for the final play for Surdy, able to just walk through everyone and take down the Nexus. Oh, we get two replays of this. This is incredible. Wow. Oh, three. Oh, my. This is some bullying production <laughs> on Surdy. Wow. Well, I mean, you know what? He does you know get what? the win in the end. So Yeah, you know. Yeah, I was about to say, like, even though production cyber bullied uh, Surdy, <laughs> all, all off the back of Smax's uh, devilish encouragement, hashtag live evil. <laughs> Surdy does get the front door, back door uh, win for this squad in the end. So it was all according to Keikaku for this uh, top laner. Oh, that's really funny. I, <laughs> I'm glad that that persisted on to the, the highlight reel too. And we get to see some crazy poke potential from Tomio and Shiro. Shiro, uh, not even going for the lethality build on Varus, but you can see that it doesn't matter when you look at how much damage his arrows are dealing. And here we go. This is this is where Immortals. Uh, I, I think it's fair to fair to say they tunnel vision on a certain play. And um, yeah, Surdy Surdy has his eyes on the prize here, Rob. He takes down the Nexus, which, uh, in case you didn't know, sitting at home. The Nexus actually wins you the game in League of Legends. So Surdy doing that is a. Is hey, good. man. <laughs> hey, hey, man. 
<laughs> you don't have to be so patronizing, but yes, it, it, it was a uh, it was definitely a head scratcher for the Immortals Academy squad. I I guess at at, at that point, it, it is so incredibly hard to to pick and choose between either you know going out for the, the preventing evil geniuses prodigies from being able to push in through the mid lane because it the, one of the things that we talked about when that draft first started was the fact that egp had built themselves up to a, a poke composition and then instead of you know going for strong disengage methods apart from the the, the oriana for aspect they had a split pusher in Surti. so now you you had the makings of a one four where four-man core is poking and trying to whittle the enemy team and as long as they're not able to get the hard engage down which usually works out because the split pusher is taking up the attention of the main hard engage from Tapoon. so then you're relying on potluck to hit a losing lullaby or scatter the weak stun from this uh pretty and a lot of those times they, they weren't enough and so Tapoon was forced to answer and try to find a fight to stop them from being able to win the game the, the slow way but it doesn't mean you still can get uh, forget about Surdy yeah. <laughs> just winning the game on his own. There, are, there are a few things that Immortals could have done better in in the gameplay of that game, but I do want to take a look at the draft a little bit as we are making our way toward the second draft of this series. Immortals staying on blue side for it, sort of thinking of what they can do uh, to alter their playstyle and and maybe pull out that reverse sweep or even at least take us to that game three against the Prodigies. I'm, I'm really looking at this composition that they've put together and others like it in the arena of legends and even back in the the academy regular season, the round robin, and going as far back as even the, the lock-in tournament where they did have these five same players. One of the things that I have noticed from the drafts that they end up putting together is that a lot of times they are lacking that burst damage that we often see paired up with a lot of the meta junglers in specific where you're having uh, the bear slap duo of the Voli Bear and the Udyr, things like the Hecarim as well. You have so much accessible crowd control at all times. So you just have to point and click at them and they're locked down. And then from everyone else's side, you just got to shoot all of your stuff at them. And if you have enough burst, they'll die. Simple as that, right? But for immortals, they oftentimes don't pair up that that easy access stun champion uh, like the Scion that we saw in this last game with a burst champion. And I, I would really like to see if they can pair that up. Uh, we've seen the most successful compositions that they end up coming up with are things that pair really well with the Orianna in the mid lane or the Syndra for pretty, or maybe even just him on things like the Echo where he can be that burst damage. And then you pair that up with something like a Tristana for Keith. And the Echo was something that we saw from Pretty during the Arena of Legends run as right. well. And it uh, enables him to be a split pushing threat. So, and th therefore, you can get uh, the makings of a powerful 1 4 if Tapoon is going to be dedicated with the, the four man core, or you can set up a 1 3 1. And we've talked about ways of Immortals Academy also playing towards the top side as well, as Tapoon did lock in Scion this game one, but we have also seen him play other split pushers in the past. Not as frequent for this squad, but it is still an option. And he has the capabilities coming in from Oceana. But we do have Champ Select for game two ready and available, folks. Both teams are locked in. We're going to get pick and bans underway in just a few seconds here, Smacks. And like I mentioned, Immortals Academy, uh, they did choose to stay on the blue side in this one, not really too keen on going for any counter picks in that regard. Can't blame them too much as the counter pick that did come through for the Prodigies was just another Ditto Mage sort of deal in that mid lane, the Orianna's response to Syndra. So uh, the Prodigies didn't quite make use of that fifth pick counter pick to as devastating effect as we possibly could have seen not the aspect played poorly on the oriana he played very well he did land a lot of these shockwaves in those fights and he did pump out that damage for his team as we often see from aspect he is that facilitator for the squad but he's not the kind of player who's gonna get a super big lane counter pick and then just, just run you over after that for Evil Geniuses Prodigies, I don't suspect much will change in terms of draft plan and adaptation as they're the ones that won game one. And even though that it was through a means of you know, unexpected for Immortals Academy, the back door, uh, <laughs> Evil Geniuses still were having their way with the game for the majority of the, of 
of that first set there. And for Mortals Academy, already looking at one of the problems there in that Thresh, taken away from Mist as he was on fire with those death sentences, being able to find hook after hook onto multiple members in the Immortals Academy. Normally, like Thresh is not necessarily known for his team fighting, mainly for pick control, but man, I mean, the way that the accuracy and how many times he was able to find death sentences onto vital targets like Keith, yeah, it made, his, made it look pretty damn good there, Smags. Yeah, Mist and Shiro being on fire for this series is exactly the type of benefit the Evil Genius's prodigies are looking for, where Shiro could potentially be on this Varus again. It has not been banned in this game, and Mist, you know, he can't be on that Thresh, but there are other hook champions where he can be just as deadly. Um, you just can't be as deadly and as safe at the same time. You don't get the hook and the Dark Passage on champions that are not named specifically Thresh. So we'll see what he's got left in the tank, and we'll see if Shiro likes the Varus yet again. We saw that it was a response to the Senna Tom Kench, but so far, Mortals Academy, they do still have that possibility, and they do still take away the Lilia. Well, if the Lilia's going to be taken... You already know what EGP ran into it last time. It was the Tomio Nidalee. So we're going to see it run back this jungle matchup once again. But this time, knowing that there's no Thresh, EGP are going to go for a priority support lock-in. And as you have pointed out multiple times, Smax, Thresh is a kind of seen as a lane counter to Rel, being able to flay her anytime that she tries to go in with the Ferromancy. With Thresh gone, Rel will be locked in. And this is also a champion that is a little bit difficult to operate uh, against when you are Tom Kench, because if she does save her, her Lance jab on the Q, you can just kiss your shield goodbye. It eats the entire thing. So not quite the same level of matchup propensity that you have. Uh, Joey not going to be locking in that champion right away, but we've got some very interesting things going on in this draft, Rafa, that are not named Tom Kench. So let's let's go through those in in here just a little bit. We got Nar versus Irelia in the top lane for Tapoon and Surdy, respectfully. Oh, man. Anytime I see an Irelia locked in after the Nar blind pick has been... Uh has also been locked in. I just imagine my friend and our colleague Joshi just cringing in pain and wincing <laughs> as uh, as he is a NAR expert and enthusiast himself. He knows how terrible of a matchup it is for NAR if you're going up against the Aurelia. Yeah, all she has to do is land that E stun and you are dead. Just right away. It doesn't matter how much health you have. Even if you're Mega NAR, you can knock her away. She'll just bounce right back. She will dash right onto your head. So for Surity, really nice lane counter pick. And another thing I want to mention is that it seems like Pretty is going to be playing on this Lucian, which is more damage packed into Immortals Academy. It is a little bit more burst threat as they, they do still have a Marksman that they can pick for Keith, but it's it's not that mage style that we've seen him have so much success on and in fact i don't think he is i don't think he's won a game so far this year on lucian if uh if we remember this the stats that were pulled up for that so it's definitely it's definitely not a play style that we often uh see a lot of success on for pretty in the immortals but it is a different style for this series and they definitely need to look at something along those lines We'll check this out, Smax. Uh, it looks like Aspect has already locked in his counter pick of choice into yeah. what supposedly may be the Lucian. Now, I want to note that Keith has played Lucian in the past, but he's not going to take it into the bot lane. He's just going to say, I'm going to take the Zaya, and we're going to have to see what Joey's support of choice is. It is into a rel. They don't know what Shiro is going to be locking in for himself as Right. E Evil Genius's prodigies are actually giving, you know, the last pick of choice for for Mr. Shiro here. Yeah, it's really cool that they're doing that because four AD carries, excuse me, five AD carries are taken off the board with that with that Zaya removed. And after that happens, you, you start to think, I wonder what you're really going to go for. Maybe something like a Caitlyn to try to go for some lane dominance or something like the Twitch that we've seen come as a, as a flavor pick 
you can maybe go for the AP. This Ezreal is also something that you can go for, and it does service the poke of the Nidalee from Tomio rather nicely. So that one's going to be locked in for Shiro in that bottom lane, and it is a nice response into the Xia Leona too, because it is much more difficult to lock down and obliterate an Ezreal when he has that arcane shift. And something to note here as well, Smacks. Immortals Academy, they are not going or opting in for as tanky of a front line as they did last game. You know, Scion and Gnar, you know, obviously when when once Tapoon goes mega, you know, he gets a little bit more beefy, but he's not a dedicated tank, right? You know, he, he will be building some armor stats as he's going to have to try his best to survive against Surty. More than likely, we, we, we should see seeing the likes of Steel Plated Caps rush for him so he can have the extra mobility uh, being able to kite away from Surty, as well as probably a Bramble Vest so that he can reduce on the, the healing that will be coming out. As you like to mention, Smacks, as soon as uh, Aurelius hit, hit Vamp Scepter, that's the one item power spec that they need to start to start dominating a lane. But going to Shiro, if he's going to be going the the path of the, potentially this lethality Ezreal build that we've also you know popped up, or at least you know Essence Reaper more amount, that's a lot of physical damage coming out, and there's not many uh, frontliners here or people that are going to be stacking armor reliably. A lot of these people, Podluck, Pretty, and Keith, are going to be susceptible to the mixed poke, both physical from Shiro and magic from Tomio. It feels like in a game like this, whoever kills the AD carry first has a really huge way to win the rest of the fight, right? And for, for Immortals, it does feel like they have a very well-suited AD carry when it comes to what Evil Genius's prodigies want to do. Where I mean, Zaya, they got two. They, they do have two, right but Zaya especially <laughs> is very strong at dealing with these champions that want to come into her, right? You have all these feathers that you can just weave in and out of the fights and then pull back at a moment's notice so you can snare everyone and deal so much burst damage which hey is exactly the type of thing that i wanted to see from immortals to begin with in this game number two so i like that as an adaptation in this series and i like the way that this zaya looks into a comp like this it's going to be up to keith to mechanically pilot this one to a success and a victory potentially for immortals Potluck going to be starting on this red buff. Tomio doesn't look like he's going to be starting on the top side of the map like he did last time. He's going to go for a bottom side start. And I'm curious to see if Tomio decides to go for an aggressive evade early. He should have priority through Surdy on this top side of the map, but Tapoon actually grabbing that minion wave early. I believe he wants to be able to set up for... I'm not sure if that actually, uh, if, if Surdy being able to interrupt that, if it, that actually sets up the wave state that Tapu wants it to be, but, you know, for Aspect into into Pretty in the mid lane, the other thing that we good. have to consider, uh-oh, oh, is this the, the Raptor Red, Red yep. Raptor, Raptor Invade? Oh, baby. Can't do anything about it. Potluck is running immediately over to the Raptor camp of his opponents, smiting it away. He even has that possibility to go for some more, but... Gonna play it safe. Just gonna take away the Raptors and Tomio. Left to just fend for himself. He does have a melee mid laner against the range of Pretty, who does land a nice face breaker, but can't quite find that same level two priority, which is admittedly a very tough ask for your mid laner, especially against Lilia. And Potluck jumps on that opportunity very nicely. I'm not too familiar with the Lucian set matchup <laughs> smacks, but uh, I would imagine that Rain should always be able to to give pretty an advantage. But him taking a quite an, a, a disgusting trade from Aspect is uh, even though being ahead in CS can be scary, as this is a huge wave that Surdy has built up into the top side. But Tomio not being oh my gosh, is he actually what? Yep, Surdy. Yep, that's all it takes, Rafa. You land one E stun. I told you. You should. I don't even know why you're surprised. I told you. All you gotta do is land the E stun. Okay, but but, but, but check this out, Smacks. Okay, okay. So Tapoon was only level two, so you know the base stat difference, you know, makes a huge difference, right? I just didn't think that I, the way that Tapoon Tapoon uh, played it under tower. I don't know. It seems like he, he should have been able to at least trade a kill back on Deserty. The flash seemed questionable. I don't know. I. Uh -oh. I'm a bad player, so I'm not going to question <laughs> it even further. <laughs> Tomio, though, he's in a bad spot. And Keith and Joey making this opportunistic roam. 
are going to force the flash out of Tomio. It's not going to be his death anytime soon, but it does put Tomio behind in terms of tempo already on top of the fact that Potluck was able to steal away a camp from him as well. Just excellent use of the, the jungle priority there. Uh, and, and the lane priority bot lane is Joey lands this roam very well. We get to see the top lane dive yet again. There's just so much damage packed into Irelia where if you land that stun, you just get to queue so many times and right click so many times and Tapoon can't do yeah. anything about it. Yeah, you're right. Super deadly. Yeah, the the, the, the flash looked weird, uh, I guess, in the moment, but you know, looking back at it a second time, it, it doesn't really leave any option when you're when you're level two and the Aurelia is level three. Early on, guys, if uh, if you haven't played top lane, you know, base stats mean so much and yep. can mean the difference in being able to survive you know, early dives like that, and just sort of being able to play the wave state so well, getting a huge crash, punishing and forcing Tapoon to teleport early. Notice that Surdy didn't have to burn his teleport at all, so now he has a teleport advantage to be able to make plays onto the bottom side of the map if they were to come up soon. This is why Joshi, as the perennial NAR player in the, the casting crew, really does not like this matchup. This is the reason. He... He's probably crying right now. I'm sure he is. Joshi, the if you're is out there, in. I'm sorry that you have to see this. I'm sorry that your your favorite NAR champion is getting bullied. So, if you're if you need if you need some help later, I will give you a hug. Aw, that's nice. Well, Surdy just continuing to bully Tapoon, and knowing that Tomio and oh my gosh, they've even brought Mist here just to continue putting Tapoon into the dirt as Surdy is trying to bait him into the wings here, but they have to know Faramancy finally lands on the Tapoon. Ooh. The flawless duet stand does not land as Tapoon is able to hop his way out of safety. And now, so oh. he's just waiting patiently, but they find an attract repel stun on the potluck, forcing the flash out. But they're still trying to do their best to kite this one out. And finally, EGP say, we got enough advantages. We can leave now. Getting that flash out of potluck, it is in trade of that of Mist and the Ignite. Not to mention Shiro uh, being very sad in this bottom lane, who does not have his support with him, and Joey being the Leona. This means that if he gets hit by even one thing, he very well could be dead. Which is why he has cleanse. So nice out of. Oh, that's Shiro why he's playing Ezreal out. too, man. That's who. He knew what it was. He knew exactly what it was. He he will <laughs> survive very nicely under this turret and. Joey, seeing that there's no chance that he can kill this Ezreal, is going to be roaming around the map. Aspect, getting cold. Taking a lot of damage from that calling. Missed. Potentially Hex flashing over the wall to interrupt, as uh, we also saw Potluck stealing the chicken nuggets once again away from Tomio. This is a far better start from the jungler for Immortals Academy, as he has essentially built himself a 3-4 camp lead over Tomio. Tomi has not been able to really find any advantages, but Potluck still invading further, where Shiro is Ooh. here first of the party, and he's just going to take out Potluck, knowing that he didn't have flash from the top skirmish on the top side of the map. Shiro is able to flash away from danger, gets out alive, and just like that, Potluck, just as we were praising for him for his advantage, gets slightly put behind. That's a solo kill, Rafa. Nobody else even helped out with that one at all. Shiro just pumps out so much damage onto Potluck, who's trying his He's trying his hardest to find some sort of play, but he can't make it stick. Hero, a ton of damage with this Conqueror on the Ezreal. And this is this is why he is heralded as one of the top prospects on the amateur side of Proving Grounds for this year. His AD carry is so, so clean on so many different champions. You have to remember that Immortals tried to ban him out so desperately. They took away five AD carry champions, and he's still performing on that sixth option for him. EGP have climbed not necessarily a lot in terms of gold lead here, but they are slightly ahead. It is getting close though. Tapoon, however, oh my gosh, this could just could be a solo kill from Tapoon. No way, Surdy is able to make Ooh. this outplay work, but it was close. Holy moly. Tomio, however, is now going to make Tapoon very sad as all he has to do is just pounce in and get the takedown. Oh, I'll, I, I gotta say one thing first. If Tapoon did not have a Bramble Vest, that would have been not even close at all. So really nice on him to buy that Grievous Wounds. Oh, William in. Oh, 
Okay, the spear doesn't land, but he's gonna propel pretty right into the face of Tomio. Oh. He's gonna flash over the wall, but the rest of the team from Immortals Academy is there. Tomio just a little too optimistic about the play and pretty is able to punish. And Tomio not respecting that the rest of the Immortals could be there in response for the play will get taken down the first kill of the game for the side of Immortals and will lead to them starting up on the Rift Herald. Surdy does have a lot of power in this top lane, but is running out of mana and the rest of the Rift is in favor of Immortals for this play. So, in fact, Surdy is on the run. Oh, Tapoon just might actually go for the solo kill against Tapoon, and Tapoon doesn't even need to transform for the bonus health quite yet. He was so confident just being able to run him down, and despite all the attention that Surdy was receiving from EGP, Tapoon is able to come back in this lane as Aspect, no flash, solo flare doesn't quite land, Blade Caller doesn't hit the root, and he's able to walk out. It's a huge punish in the top lane for Tapoon. He makes sure that he kills Surdy while he was honestly playing rather greedy to try to get all of those minions and turret platings before his base. Does lead to Surdy getting this full Blade of the Ruin King at 10 minutes into the game off of the back of all of this priority in the top lane and all those turret platings that he took. But even still, Tapoon finds that window where Surdy is not quite as powerful as he is. The windows will not be there for the rest of the game, most likely, but Tapoon just really nice to, to punish that one right there, even under the turret. Steel plated caps and bramble vest. That is the key to being able to survive. And in Tapoon's case, look for look for solo kills of his own against a Surdy. Blade of the Rune King has been completed though for him. Oh, so we're gonna see he has the strength to be able to... Oh, he's just going to go for it he's under the dead. tower. He knows that Tapoon doesn't have Viganar, but he will die to the turret, taking two turret shots too many. And he also had no way out, as Pretty did teleport. We'll be able to pick up the wave here, as Joey was also en route. Miss and Tomio are going to be looking to potentially catch out Pretty, but Joey is also waiting in the wings to protect his mid laner. Sorry, just has so much damage in this Blade of the Ring King, and now he's going toward the plated steel caps. The top lane, though... We saw that pretty teleported on up here and... Oh. Teleports are coming in. Aspect onto the turret. It looks like it's a top poon teleport here into this brush. But now he doesn't have any support. He still has hop. He's going to be able to disengage just, just fine. As Miss did take a lot of damage, I believe. And Ignite was exchanged. But meanwhile, while all this is happening, she was getting plates on the bottom side of the map. Also getting hit by the turret a couple of times, but he doesn't care about that one right now. There are no members against him in this bottom lane because everyone made their way up to that top side for Immortals. He even gets the True Shot Barrage that wave to push it in even further. Now, Keith, it's out for blood. Nah, he's not going to find any. But Shiro hmm. is super fed in this game right now, Rafa. This is a very scary Ezreal. He might just build up. Yep, there's that full Essence Reaver. Not yet nerfed, I want to add. This is not 11.7. This item does still have the same amount of AD as the Marksman Mythics in 55. So this is a very powerful, potent Ezreal build. Well, how powerful is Aspect, though? He gets the Showmaker using Pretty as a an escape route, actually. And he's able to walk out just fine. So ultimate expended for... Practically nothing from the side of Immortals Academy, so another advantage being gained here. The dragon isn't going to be up for another 2 minutes and 40 seconds, though, so there's no real objectives to fight for and use that advantage. But for Surdy, once again, we see him duking it out with Tapoon, as I believe that there, there, there might be some more blood in this top lane. But the Rift Herald being spawned into the bottom side of the map means that Potluck will get some gold out of these plates. Evil Genius Prodigies are really just kind of running around the map trying to kill as many people as they can. You can see that the, the death squad of Aspect and Tomio are trying their hardest to do that. They're doing it at the detriment of their own CS. See that uh, Pollock is up about three camps and Aspect's down, or in, in pretty, Pretty's up about three waves as well. It's, it's about as much time as they spent roaming, so it's kind of kind of funny how that lines up, Rob. Ah. Weird. <laughs> How bizarre. <laughs> For Aspect, getting pushed in by Pretty once again. Potluck crossing this mid lane as well. 
Potentially making his way towards the top side of the map. Pretty could also be en route as well. There's also an opportunity for this Immortal Academy jungle mid duo just to get into the face of Tomio. Try to find an opportunity to engage. But now, with Mist here, and 30 being the first one to roam from top lane, I'm going to force Immortal Academy back into the confides of their and safety of their own jungle. It's Top Poon and Surdy once again. We just we just constantly see them du duking it out back and forth. As Tomio is waiting in the wings, and from Fog of War, the spear is not going to land, but Surdy still might have enough damage to just Ooh. take down Top Poon. Uh, uh oh. Oh uh, well, Surdy. Good night, sir. Immortals Academy able to punish. They land the Swirling Seed for the Lilting Lullaby. Pretty picks it up, and now he's going to pick up the wave once again in the top lane. You know, Rafa, Surdy sure is very flashy in this game. He sure is going for a lot of these kills in the top lane, but I have to I have to say, it does kind of feel like Evil Genius's prodigies are pulling off a sleight of hand trick against the Immortals, where all this stuff is going on in front of their eyes, but behind Evil Genius's back, they have a super fed Ezreal. Just took the first turret all by his own. He's up a, he's up a thousand gold in this bottom lane against Keith. And when you see a draft like this, yes, your eyes do look at Surdy as being the super big carry for the side of Evil Geniuses, but both of these AD carries are so crucial for the way that the 5v5 fights are going to play out. Keith, on this kite back style of champion, in the Zaya is the hope for Immortals to scale up in this game and be very threatening later on. And when they give up control of the entire bot oh. side of the map, oh! Flash from Miss and Aspect from over the wall coming in with the Haymaker Showmaker, baby. Oh, I should say Showstopper. I, I I knew that the ultimate was quite not the, the correct name there, but still, EGP. They take the second dragon of the game, and like you said, Smacks, both of these compositions, so dependent on their primary marksman from the bottom lane. Although for Immortals Academy, they do have two on their side. It doesn't necessarily mean that two is better than one, as so far, EGP Aspect Ooh. has been able to set up plays time and time again, as we already see Flash being expended to take away Pretty's Flash. And now he is trapped under this turret, Mist and Tomio on their way to making this dive happen. Potluck is en route. Joey coming, flashing over the wall. Faramancy from Mist trying to dissuade the fight. And he's going to go down to Pretty. And Immortals Academy are able to answer back. And Joey is just so quick to respond to these plays. This is the second time in a row that he's been able to arrive to this top lane play that Evil Genius' prodigies are trying to go for and make it less than favorable for them. Gotta commend Joey for plays like this. And... This is the, these are the exact type of plays that they need to keep making if they want to be winning on this game. He's still not done. Showstopper comes out once again. He has the Haymaker oh. shield. Joey, it's enough damage to be able to trade one for one. He still goes down, and Tomio's here to make sure that there's no further damage. But I don't know if Tomio will want to stay much longer, and Pretty might have the advantage to push this wave in, but the turret will be saved. Not quite going to be sticking around in that regard. There is a Rift Herald to be had, uh, although for Evil Geniuses, they did just lose out on their mid laner and Shiro just recalled. But the good thing about Shiro recalling is that he now has two completed items in this game. He's matching that of the mid laner of Pretty, and he's an entire man immune up on Keith, his lane opponent. So this is, this is a monster fed Ezreal in this game, Rafa. I, again, have to, have to remind everyone in, in the Immortals, too, if they're listening, you gotta do something about this Shiro guy. He's pretty good, if you haven't heard. Yeah, the way that he was able to pilot the AP oh, oh. Varus. Oh, actually, we have a fight. Rift Herald being taken by EGP, and now they're looking to turn it around, but Pretty just annihilates Mist before he gets a chance to find a re-engage, but oh. Potluck gonna have to flash away. Oh. Pretty and Shiro <laughs> looking for a 1v1! Holy moly, it was so close, but Shiro comes out on top. And now Aspect is trying to dive Potluck, forcing oh. already his flash, but the Haymaker true damage is so damn strong. Mortals Academy, however, bring up their secondary marksman. Keith is able to trade one back onto Surdy. Tomio now trying to get the hell out of there. Topoon looking for a play. 
But he oh. does not flash. Keep flashing over the wall, popping the heal. He just needs Ooh. the feather storm and the blade call, and he gets a shutdown. Let two can on the bird has arrived. Oh, Keith, can he survive the onslaught of punches from Aspect? He's one hit from dead, Rafa. Tomio as well. Tapoon trying to make the hero play. There's a teleport from Pretty. He gets face broken, and now Mist is unmounted. Can he walk away from this? No, no he can't. <laughs> Double kill from Pretty. This game has more kills than minutes. My goodness. This is the game, too, that we were waiting for, Spax. <laughs> the banger of all bangers. 11 to 11. Almost more than one kill per minute here, Spax. Yeah, this is nuts. This is this is the kind of game that we were wanting to see. And we get to watch the replay all over. This, this replay is probably going to be like three minutes long if they're putting everything in this fight. Starts off with that Rift Herald take and then missed... Trying to find that engage to stall for the rest of his team as we see Aspect running headfirst oh. under this turret. And Shiro does have to use his flash, so he does end up dying in the end. But uh, again, this replay is probably going to be three minutes long, so we're going to have to wait and see that one uh, in a second. You know, something that I didn't realize the first time around is how close Pretty was able to actually take down Shiro. Considering that Pretty had a uh -oh. substantial health deficit. Oh no, Tomio. Tomio, Tomio, where art thou? You're about to get Nyquiled. Gonna get shut down. Oh. Pretty takes another kill to his name, but Surdy getting outplayed by Topoon, slamming him against the wall and it buys enough time to be able to flash away to safety. Now Mortals Academy. We know, Smacks, that they had a lot to answer for after the game one loss, but they are fighting back and showing why. They deserve to be strong contenders in this tournament. We're seeing what happens when you have a somewhat lead or and then you start to lose it because you don't take a moment to catch your breath. Exactly what happens to Evil Genius's prodigies. They had the first two dragons of this game, but get caught on multiple sides of the map. Surdy outplayed in that 1v1 where he is in this counter matchup. Now on the other side, Tomio forced to use his stopwatch and still ends up dying around that dragon objective. So dragon stacking is not quite there anymore. Or Evil Genius's prodigies and up in this top lane. That transform was, was so Yeah. Yeah. It was so close. Surdy almost had double digits on the top boom, but with the transform, it gets beefier, he gets tankier. And it's just not enough for Surdy. Topoon being able to come out on top for that one. I want to point and divert your attention to something, Smacks. I know that Iceborne Gauntlet no longer exists, mm -hmm. but Shiro has built a Glacial Shroud. So tell me, oh. what what item is it going to be? Oh, well, we'll hold that point for another bit because Tomi is about to get caught out again. Joey leading the charge for Immortals Academy, and Keith is able to follow up for the damage. And Immortals Academy now without a Tomio to potentially take away an objective. They have pressure on this Baron. I don't think they're going to start it up anytime soon, but just fighting for vision control will be enough. My answer to your question is that I don't know. Uh, I'm pretty sure that builds into Zeke's. Uh, and I I don't know what else it builds That's into. it? I, oh, I no. think it is. You know what? Let me look it up for you. Here, talk for a second. I'm going to look it up. All right. Well, Smax, while he does the Google search for... Uh, you can even hear the keyboards in the background. Oh, that's such a satisfying sound. You should do a keyboard ASMR channel, Smax. I think that would be quite successful. You could uh, compete with Teo types. All right. My research is complete. It builds into Zeke's. It also builds into Frozen Heart. Wow. You think he's... Well, you... okay, so check this out, Smax. There, there are two marksmen. So, if he's... Arcane shifting forward into the faces of Keith and Pretty. He can reduce their attack speed, which yeah. is reducing their overall uh, damage output. So I now, guess that's all, that's all true. But it is it is a tank guy, so he's, he's going to be dealing less damage. Although and... it does give you mana for your for your mirror mana passage, which is nice. I I found something else out in my research, Rafa. Would you like to hear what it is? Yes, 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 please. That item is no longer called Glacial Shroud. It's called Glacial Buckler. Glacial Buckler, Glacial Shroud. It's still it's still the same item. And oh. Tomio is still the same diff. We yes. In, in, in the same spot, too. Yes. Weird how that works. Uh, Mist 
Might be routed off here. He has no more friends. Uh, one of his friends is already dead in Tomio, and he's got nowhere out, uh, no way out of this one. Pretty gonna be donated the kill here. This is just trying to buy as much time as he can. The rest oh. of Immortals Academy should be working their way towards this Baron, however. And now EGP. Do they have the strength? Do they have the numbers to be able to bully them off the Baron? It doesn't look like that's the answer, as Aspect is the first one here. But Sturdy and Shiro were putting pressure onto the turret. They shoved in the wave, and now we're gonna see how much. How well a Frozen Heart poking uh, Ezreal can do in this team fight, aspecting uh, quite a bit of a substantial amount of damage oh. down, but it's not going to be enough. Sturdy just trying to dash all over the fight, but just gets taken out. Same with Aspect. Shiro not going to be able to, s to help with the rest of his falling comrades, and Immortals Academy just like that, with the Baron buff on their side, and 5,000 gold ahead are now looking to take the driver's seat and start pushing for a Game 2 win. Yeah, this sleight of hand trick that Evil Genius Prodigies were trying to go for isn't working out nearly as well as they would like it to be. I think they let Immortals peek behind the curtain just a little bit too much. They are now down 5,000 gold and this Baron, and Shiro might even be dead right now, forced to cleanse. Out of flash, the flash too. as well. He's got the Blast Cone to be able to get out alive, but Joey still has Solar Flare if he wants to follow up, and he barely misses. As Shiro, Arcane shifts at the last second. Gonna force him out. Heal comes out from Tomio as well. As they're gonna lose the first uh, or the mid-tier turret in this wave. And for EGP, their only main engage is Aspect. Uh -oh. As he does find a base breaker onto Keith. He has to flash away, doesn't still have Featherstorm. He's gonna be able to live to tell the tale, but for Potluck, can he say the same? Top Hoon getting CC, trying to buy some time for the rest of Immortals Academy, and they do! Aspect goes down, and Potluck manages to survive. And with this Ocean Dragon coming up in the next 20 seconds, I don't imagine EGP will have the strength to be able to contest. Oh, that Mega Nar ultimate from Tapoon was so awesome right there, Rafa. He just knocks away all of the assailants onto Keith in one literal fell swoop. But now, Evil Genius's prodigies are trying to do what they did last game. They're going for a base race. They teleport into the mid lane with Surdy. No way. I don't think they win this one, Rafa. No, I mean, Pretty is... We, we were talking about Fed Marksman. We didn't mention how how far ahead Pretty is, but he's just going to go for the Teleport. Joey looking for another Solar Flare. They're going to turn it around with the Magnus Storm combo, but just don't have enough damage to back up the engage for EGP. Uh -oh. Aspect teleporting in, but gets a Haymaker Shield down, but it's just not enough. He just practically teleported straight into death. And this Ocean Dragon is up on the table. Mortals Academy, this is a fine time to take the Dragon. It's also a, t a fine time to take all the mid lane turrets, Rafa. That's exactly what they're thinking right now. They've got this You're Baron right. <laughs> up minion wave for about 30 seconds longer. Already paved their way through the inner turret, maybe having enough time to take down the inhibitor one. Looks like they do. Shiro, not the strongest wave clear champion here on this Ezreal, especially without his ultimate. There it goes. Do they want this inhibitor? I don't think they do. Now they go and set their sights on this dragon. They get everything, Rafa. See, this is why I'm the one talking, and they're the ones actually playing the game. <laughs> you know, because uh, bad call on on my part. My apologies. But no, Immortals they, they got Dragon too. Look at Pablo. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's just the in, the priority. You know, if, if it was me, I've been like, yo, Dragon, 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 Dragon. But they're right. It's like you can get the turret, you can have the cake and eat it too. You know, in this yeah. context for Immortals Academy. Well, luckily for you, Rafa, since you are a jungler, your call would have also been right because Potluck, as the jungler, got the drink. So oh, you can also have you, your Smax. cake and eat it too. Look at that. Thank you. Smacks, I appreciate you making my, uh... well, I was going to say uh, something else, but uh, not. <laughs> I was, was going to call myself dumb. Anyway, <laughs> uh, Aspect getting engaged here by Top Topoon. Pretty takes the spear to the face, but he doesn't care. He's still going to put damage down into Aspect with a far oh. from calling, but Tomia trying to flash forward, looking for an opportunity to assassinate Pretty, but now he's in the middle of five people, and he does not have the takedown and the range to snipe out Pretty. Keith, or Tophoon, is going to channel recall, but he has teleport, and I believe EGP, down two members. This is a very advantageous spot for Immortals Academy to look for an inhibitor takedown. Genius's prodigies are just playing far too precariously with their aggression in this game. They're they're taking every single fight that they see on their screen. And Immortals 
are winning most of them in this exchange. Where the moment the Tapoon got the outplay in that top lane against Surdy is the moment that I knew, uh-oh. We're in for one of those games. And that we are, Rafa. Genius' Prodigy is still yet to find their way back into this game. Not for lack of trying. They certainly have not stopped trying. But nothing has stuck quite yet. And that's really just the nature of League of Legends. Once you get a lead, it's certainly favored for you to keep it. Surdy. Uh-oh, Surdy lights out. Attract Repel gets a four-man stun, but... There's no damage to follow up, and it's more a of a pleaser to get out and escape, but he can't. No flash. Mistried the best that he could. And Immortals Academy just continue piling on the advantage. More than 11,000 gold in their back pockets. So any time. And for pretty much for the past 10 minutes of the game here, or five minutes of the game here, Smacks, Immortals Academy have just been walking up to EGP. And any time that they, or EGP, have been trying to pick fights. Immortals just slap their faces around with thicker wallets. It just feels like the, the marksmen here for Immortals are able to do so much more in this in this game where they do have this kite back style where Pretty and Keith on Lucian and Zaya can keep their opponents at at an arm's length and then just kite them kite them to death, really. It's exactly what we're seeing time and time again in this game. Evil Genius's prodigies trying to find all of these engages. They're really playing like they're they're the ones with the eleven thousand gold lead, but unfortunately for Evil Genius's prodigies, they are about twenty two thousand gold away from that. And I don't know if they're gonna be getting that one anytime soon. Immortals really showing their stuff in this game and showing that they are not wanting to go down 0-2 and be the second academy team to do so on the day. At this point, Smax, the only hope that you have as EGP to be able to take out super fed marksmen like Keith, like Pretty, you have to find a teleport flank and you have to get the showstopper, propel them right into your team and hopefully Shiro, Tomio, Surdy are able to follow up for the burst. If you're able to eliminate one marksman, then it makes the, the odds better in your favor. Mm -hmm. But they have two. And th that that is what has been causing such an issue because you take down one or you trade one for one, still doesn't matter. You still have another very fed marksman that is able to, like you said, keep the rest of the opposition at bay, being able to kite back. And they have packing so much sustained damage that they're able to clean up these fights. But for Immortals Academy, being 10,000 gold lead doesn't mean that they get to play with complacency. They still need to be wary of these flanks that Surdy and Aspic could look for. They also might just have the strength to push into this base and end it right now. Forcing the flash out of Surdy is going to stifle that engage potential that you were hoping to see if Evil Genius's prodigies were going to get a comeback. Coral's Tapoon. And the rest of the gang just flexing those muscles. That's going to be a third inhibitor dropping. There's a three-man oh, sleep, Rafa. Beautiful three-man lilting lullaby from Potluck, forcing Mist to engage into his death. Joey just being such a damn good engagement setup for Immortals Academy. And Pretty is there with the follow-up, picking up a double. Joey going forward once again, and Pretty with the triple. We talked about this mid laner for Immortals Academy being one of the main affinities, the main win conditions for this squad. And even though he has only been able to pick up wins on Syndra and Orianna and other mages, this is the first time that he gets a win on Lucian, and he does so in dominating fashion. He definitely does. He earns that win with style in that game, both he and Keith pumping out so much marksman AD damage in that game. And Rafa, we're going to a game three today in this series, Evil Genius's Prodigies and Immortals Academy taking us there. And yeah, we, we've had some some long drawn out games and we we've had some really big back and forth this one the bloodiest one on the day and i think it's pretty safe to say that evil genius's prodigy is just they they had one plan and it was to click on the enemy health bars that appeared on their screen and then when that plan made it so they were down ten thousand gold they said uh-oh our plan didn't work <laughs> but at that point it's a little bit too late rafa a little bit too late.
And even with that said, you know, we all the investment going into Surdy onto the top side and diverting from the fact that Shiro was farming himself up, he did not turn out to be as dominant of a threat as uh, we were kind of predicting or Immortals Academy might have been fearing because Pretty was the person between him and Keith were just absolutely just destroying them in terms of damage. We have to give massive credit to Tapoon as well for taking so much harass, being the focus of so much uh, and just straight up camping from Tomio and Mist. And it didn't matter. Tapoon still being able to find solo kills back on the Surdy in that 1v1 matchup. And even even Joey and Potluck finding beautiful engages with the, the swirling seed, lulting lullabies, solar flare combos. I, I, I like you already said it before, Joey cannot be commended enough for mm -hmm. the amount of proactivity that he showed and just his, you know, fourth willingness of being able to force those engage. But ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna be taking a quick break as we get ready for game three. Stay tuned. We we'll right back. Verizon believes everyone deserves the best. That's why we start with 5G from America's most reliable network. Verizon 5G is next level. Then give families plans to mix and match so you only pay for what you need starting at $35. You get so much more than this a great network. And offer the best in entertainment on select unlimited plans like Disney Plus, Hulu, and ESPN Plus, as well as Discovery Plus with a Galaxy S21 Plus 5G when you buy one. There's no reason to settle for less than the best. Only from Verizon. 